This is the IFF TV podcast. Hello, Mark Irish Football Fan TV. We're delighted to be in Tallis Stadium, the home of obviously Sean McRovers, where Gavin Bazzini made his name. We're going to meet him here. He's after winning Portsmouth's Players Player of the Season, Player of the Season, and he's obviously RT's 2021 Young Sports Person of the Year. So we're going to go meet him now, and we're going to go chat to him about his career so far. All right, big man, how are you? Hi, Paul, how are you? Third time, lucky. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Um, well, I suppose we're here where it all began for you, I suppose, as a pro. But um, talk to me, I suppose, first, thanks for giving up your time. But uh, talk to me about you know football, and you're obviously such a young man, but talk to me about your early days of, of football and kind of how you got into it, and what are your earliest memories of football? Um, yeah, so this is obviously a very special place for me. Some of my earliest memories came from here. I know my very first match I came to watch here was actually Ronaldo's debut. Uh, when he played uh, Real Madrid, I uh, played here. I think they won 1 0, but I came with my dad, and um, that's probably my earliest memory of, of coming to Tala Stadium. Who were your, your heroes uh, growing up as, as a young boy, I suppose? Um, it's a good one. Like, you know, I'd say for me it was, it was interesting because I was involved in. I'm interested in League of Ireland from such an early age, so uh, my, my role models growing up would have been, you know, probably Stephen Rice. Um, I know there would have been like Barry Murphy would have been playing here. Um, I suppose Pat Flynn, all those lads. Alan Manis was, was here for a year when I was watching. And um, just to be like involved with some of them when I was growing up in the academy as well was, was brilliant for me because they were my inspirations. Yeah, just for, from an Irish perspective, um, who, who were your Royals from, from the Irish national team? Um, the main, main ones would have been Shea Given and Darren Randolph, obviously. Um, and then you've got Damien Duff, Robbie Keane, they were, they were the main inspirations. Uh, but now probably Darren Randolph would have been the one I watched the most. Um, he would have been the one that was most prevalent in, in my years of watching the Irish team growing up. Yeah, he was such a strong presence during that, you know, I suppose that last five years, probably till yourself, uh, Cuevy and Mark kind of came in. So, um, what was he like when you, you got into the team? I know we talked a bit more about, about Ireland, but you know the fact that he's one of your heroes and then you kind of go and play him, and Alan Manis as well, that, mm. it, it was all kind of happened so quick. Yeah, well, the mad thing is I've actually never even met Darren. Have you not? Never, never crossed paths with him, no. Now I've, I've got to say hi to him once or twice uh, when I was with the 21s and he would have been with the first team, but we were never in any camps together. But I've, I've spoke to him a lot over text and um, we've got a pretty good relationship and he seems like a really nice guy. He's always congratulating me and um, he's been really welcoming for me, like not in person but over text, which is really good. Yeah, just from the perspective of, of obviously coming up, and what clubs were you with growing up? Uh, so my first club was Shamrock Rovers. Um, I would have started with them when I was about, I'd say, four years old. Um, I would have been with Rovers up until, I'd say, the age of 10. Um, the team I was part of, we didn't actually have enough, enough players to field the team for the next season, so I had to leave. Uh, I was at Leicester Celtic, uh, Mount Marion and Knockline all for a year uh, before I came back to, to Rovers, uh, I think it was under 14. Yeah. Okay, so uh, like you've obviously had a strong presence with Rovers to be a club growing up, you said you had your first game here, so did that play, you, you wanted to stay with them I imagine, obviously you said they didn't have enough players so you went back to them later, but was it always a kind of a thing bringing you back to them? Yeah definitely, like I mean even in the years when I was playing with uh, Leicester, not lying about Marion, you know, when I was probably 11, 12, 13, I would still be coming to, to Tallis Stadium to watch the games and still being involved in the club. And then when I was, when I got the opportunity and I got a phone call from Shane Robinson and he came and met myself, my mum and my dad and talked about coming back, you know, it was, it was a really exciting moment. Mm, he's obviously big in with the academy there and I know you kind of still go back and I visit your roots, which is quite cool. Well, talk to me from, I suppose, that, that point, graduating into the first team and when did you start training with the first team and what was that like? I mean, you spoke about Alamanis being here when, when you as a kid were watching, you know, and then training with him. Because I know your paths crossed with him, maybe not with Darren, but obviously yeah. with Alan. Yeah, so I think uh, I would have started training with the first team probably uh, when I just turned 15. Um, it would have been in the summer after my junior cert um, when the club spoke a bit about you know, the Ashfield initiative about going in uh, for fifth and sixth year. So I was phased into the training from, from that summer and it was, uh, it was very tough at first, you know, going in at 15 years old into, into a first team with, with the men that were there. But, you know, it was a really good group and, you know, some of the lads like Ronan Finn, who I would have been watching for years, um, 
to see him and to be able to train with him was, was massive for me. Um, and then obviously later on, uh, when I turned 16 and went to have Alan come in, that was, that was brilliant to work with him for the course of a year. Yeah, what was it like, you know, you spoke about Ron Finn, what was he like towards you coming in? Was he, you know, all over you, making sure you're okay and all that, because he was the, the skipper? Yeah, yeah, he was brilliant, you know, the, there was a really good group of lads like uh, Luke Byrne as well, who was here, he was, yeah, yeah. He was really good with me, you know, I, I got... Uh, I got a really good connection with him and uh, he was a coach for you, he was also a coach yeah so it, it made that connection a bit easier for me uh, going up to the first team but Jose the goalkeeper coach as well was was massive for me he he was uh, we have a really close relationship I was even just out for for breakfast with him this morning I see him every time I'm home speak to him all the time when I'm away and um, our relationship was um, was massive in me being so comfortable around the team looking behind us this is is where you grew up supporting the club your debut, I suppose, just the lead up to it and everything like that. What was that like, knowing that you were you were going to be getting the opportunity to finally play here? Maybe prematurely, but still getting the opportunity all the time. Yeah, um, I mean, there was a run of of difficult results leading up to the to the Bray game where I made my debut. Um, I'd been doing quite well in training that week, but there was absolutely no indication given towards me that that I was going to play. Um, I was coming coming to the stadium, not really thinking much of it, um, and just an hour hour and a half before kickoff was uh, when I was shown the team sheet, and you know, and I said I was going to play, and from there I didn't have too much time to think of it, and you know, the best thing was as soon as the team sheet sheet went up with my name on it, all the senior lads uh, coming up to me saying, you know, no problem to you, um, and that was that was really comforting for me, and from there I just took it like any other game I'd played up until then, and. Um, Luckily, you know, it couldn't have couldn't have been much of a better debut. You know, we're playing against Bray, and we scored a penalty in the first, I think, ten minutes, and there was also a red card. So, you know, from there we had um, we had a quite a simple game. I only had one or two things to do, but you know, it was a really really good moment for me and my family. Mm. Yeah, but that's what I was gonna say. Like, how how were your family? Did they know? Did, did Stephen say to them or anything like that, or, or, no, or even not, your agent? Not not that I know of. No, I think. Um, I think my agent might have known, but he never said anything to me. But no, um, it was a, yeah, it was a great moment for for all of them to be to be here. I think my brother was here watching, my mom, my dad, and it was it was a brilliant moment for all of them. Yeah, because there was a quote like that, Stephen. You know, he didn't really want to throw you in there, but you felt like you were ready. Did you feel like you were ready? I know you said you weren't expecting it, but did you feel like you were ready if called upon? Yeah, I mean. Um, it wasn't a case of, I think I was even too young to think, oh, I'm ready to step up and play. It was more of a case of that I felt confident in training. Um, and obviously the manager had enough faith in me to think that I could bring it into the games. Uh, because all I was doing day to day was just going out training and trying to improve every day. And, you know, in my head, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, at the level where I expect to play it or anything like that at all. It was just that when I got my chance, I was going to take it. Yeah, but, you know, you just said there about you know, you, all you were really doing was just training, probably going to school. So, uh, do you have to sacrifice much from a social life uh, kind of point of view, like telling friends, I can't go out here. Honestly, I, I have to kind of park it, which can be hard at, at 16. Like yeah. most 16 years don't want to do that. If you get me, you know. Yeah, and I'll be honest. Um, I wouldn't consider it a sacrifice because it was never that. Oh, uh, I can't go out. It was I didn't want it. I wanted to just be the best professional I could be. I wanted to be training all the time and involved with football. So I never really felt like I was missing anything. It was always just that I was doing what I wanted to do. Yeah, I suppose with the games that you were playing there, it all went quite well. I think you had four competitions in four games. If you correct me if I'm wrong, player of the month uh, from the SSC Electricity yeah, Player of the yeah. Month. I mean, as far as that was probably a dream period for you of that course of time. Yeah, yeah. So I had the the four league games. I kept four clean sheets, like you, you played said. In Europe as well. And then I played yeah. the two games in Europe. Unfortunately, we we got knocked out. But you know, the second game, second leg went to extra time, and that was um, that was an amazing experience um, in Sweden when we played against AIK. And I think there was ten, twelve thousand people there. It was a brilliant atmosphere. Um, and just to play at that level, you know, I don't think now looking back at it, I don't think at the time I understood. What, what the level I was playing at or the significance of the game at all. I was just there to to keep that momentum of the four games I played in the league and I just really enjoyed it. Because mm, yeah, you look at your former teammate Zach obviously over there playing with AOK now and you know just after Covid the scenes of the fans and everything like that they were a massive club and obviously to go over and play that, that must have been just an absolutely amazing experience. Yeah it was, it was a brilliant experience and I remember um, I think it just maybe the week before, two weeks before was when Alan came in 
um, and he was brilliant for me. You know, he he was so so such a calming influence as as you see. Like he's like a big friendly giant, and um, he was amazing with me. You know, telling me straight from the start, putting his arm around me and uh, making me feel comfortable. So um, that was a massive part. Yeah, just you know, Chamak Rovers. Before we move on, but like I, I see you here. You're obviously pre-season last year. You came back. I think you were visiting the academy and stuff like that. You're obviously here when they're playing League of Ireland, you're here in your Rovers tracksuit when they're playing and stuff like that. We just, you know, from a League of Ireland point of view, and obviously we do things to try and promote the league, it's great to see players like yourself coming back, giving back to the league, but you're not, you're not only just giving back to the league, you're obviously coming as a fan to watch, which is great, because if people see you doing it, then it kind of, it sends out a bigger message saying, hang on, if the former goalkeeper, and the current Ireland goalkeeper is coming to watch the games, then it's an opportunity for there's obviously good enough players to be coming and watching in the league, right? You know. Yeah, definitely. For me, it's just I'm coming as a, from the perspective of a fan, um, and of you know a former teammate of all the players, and you know of a friend of the manager and the rest of the staff. You know, they, we we stay in, in contact, and um, I always watch them when I'm away. You know, I've got the the stream up all the time, and never really miss a game unless we're playing at the same time. And um, just to stay in, in contact with the league and with Shamrock Rovers, uh, especially not just with the first team, but with the academy and all the lads on the way down, it's it's really important for me to stay connected. Yeah, I think it's great as well for the, for the kids for, to get a chance to meet you and stuff like that. Because obviously, not that long ago, you were one of those players in that academy, and it's nice to see that you give back and you, you know how important that is, you know, for kids to meet their heroes. And now you're one of the heroes, you know. Yeah, definitely, and. Um, for, for me, the academy, it's, um, it's brilliant. I really enjoy being a part of it. Um, I d I've done a bit of coaching since I've been back with the, with the under-11s team, which are a really special group. Um, and just to be involved with all the age groups, going to watch my brother play for the, for the 15s and um, meeting the 17s and 19s every now and again, it's really, really important for me just to stay connected. Just off the back of all of that success, you got to move to Man City who, you know, they're dominating in England and we're at that point. You get a move there, it was a, quite a high profile move. How was all that and how did you deal with kind of, I suppose the, the traction of everything that kind of came with that? Yeah, I mean, the transition was pretty smooth, um, considering that, you know, Manchester City and Ashfield College both uh, worked together to allow me to finish my leaving certificate. So I moved over uh, to Manchester in the January. Uh, but I was coming home once a week, you know, to, to go to school as well as having tutors over there. So the fact I was coming home once a week to, to see my family and going to school and see my friends uh, allowed me uh, to feel a lot more comfortable and I didn't really get that homesick feeling. Great, yeah, because you're kind of back and forth yeah, and yeah. you get to see your mates. And that's good. I think that's important as well. The, kind of, the fact that the club recognised that, you know, because you were still at that stage, I think you were 16, maybe 17 at that yeah, point. Yeah, I was 16 uh, when I went over first and then I turned 17 in the Jan in the February. Yeah, I know you, you were playing in, it was the UEFA, uh, what's it called? The Youth League. The, sorry, yeah, yeah, the UEFA Youth League and you came up against, I think it was Troy at some stage, did you? Uh, I think I came up against Troy in the, the actual league, yeah, when we played against Tottenham. Um, played in their new stadium so that was a really good yeah. game. So at that point you were kind of breaking into the 18s and I remember it might have been that summer you were taken away on the pre-season tour. What was that like? Because you know you see all these players, the Premier League winners, you've got De Bruyne, you've got Aguero, you've got Ederson as well who's arguably the best keeper in the world alongside Alisson. You know whatever way you want to look at it people have their own you know ideas and stuff like that. Um, and these players who are unbelievable, Vincent Company as well who's, who's amazing as well or was amazing. Um, so, what was it like going away and uh, like seeing everything, like from how they conduct themselves right up to what they're like in the dressing room, and you know how they conduct themselves on the pitch as well? What was that experience like? And I suppose Pep as well. Yeah, so that was a it was a really good opportunity for me to go away on pre-season tour with them. Um, Ederson wasn't there. I think he he had some extra holidays because he'd been on international duty. I think, but um, Claudio Bravo was there, and he was really good with me. You know, he he helped me to settle. Uh, was always giving me loads of advice and obviously the goalkeeper coach Xavi as well was played a massive part in my development ever since I've been at City. Um, you speak a lot about him. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's, he's really good. Yeah, between himself and Jose, they've probably had uh, the most influence on, on my career up to date. I just remember you speaking about him at press conference and just saying he, he even when you were on loan at clubs, he'd still be talking to you about, about different things and video analysis and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, when I was at Rochdale and, and Portsmouth, I mean, when I went to Rochdale at first, the plan was 
that I would uh, play with them, but I would go in and train with Javi once or twice a week. And obviously due to, due to the, the COVID restrictions, that wasn't possible anymore. But um, I was still speaking to him on the phone every week, um, going through the games and you know talking about how training was going for me. And for him to give so much of his time to me was uh, was really important to me. Mm. Just on the the lads there that they mentioned, but how how were they around and how were they towards you? Um, yeah, they were really good. You know, it was it was difficult going in at first. I. I I struggled for the first few weeks. It's overall. Yeah, ju not even just the, the speed of the game um, and the tempo, you know, the level of the training sessions was, was, was brilliant. And obviously as a young goalkeeper coming in, you're just getting hammered. Um, so, you know, it took me a few weeks to get up to speed. But when I did, you know, um, I started to feel a lot more comfortable. And, you know, I, I saw myself develop so quickly playing at their level. Um, and it really just gave me an insight on what you have to do to be at their level, obviously. You see some of the players you mentioned, like De Bruyne, Silva. Um, oh, that was just, Silva yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. I forgot him. I, yeah. I think he's amazing. Yeah, just to see see the level of them in training was was brilliant. Yeah, I, I, I can't believe I forgot David Silva. What a player! But uh, you know, I, I look at Vincent Company, and I think it was the year when Liverpool and City were going for the for the title. Were you still at the club at that stage? Um, no, I don't think I would have been around the first team at that, point. at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, because I was just going to say, what was that like being in and around that kind of seeing mm. that? But obviously. You were away at that point, but it, that must have been a really good experience because you're going from from just as I say, learn, but at an elite level, and then you go on your own to Rochdale, which at that point you're kind of playing men's football because at that point I, well, I know you'd play with, with Shamrock Rovers, sorry, uh, but I mean in England where you're kind of at that lower league and they're all kind of playing for mortgages and this type of thing. So how was that adaptation for you? Coming because you went into the 18s. I know, as I said about Rovers, you were you were playing men's football then, but because you come and went back in to go back out, but you were at a club. I imagine it was because it was near to the City, you know. Yeah, yeah. So for me, it was um, as soon as I went over to City. Um, my goal was to get out and play men's football again. You know, as soon as I got into the 18s and 23s, you know, I I didn't like it too much. It was great for my development, you know, to learn. But in terms of just that that hunger and the passion to to go and win. Uh, I, it's you can't uh, compare a 23s or 18s to a first team. So my goal was to get out and play again. So uh, as soon as I went to Rochdale, you know, I was delighted um, to be back in a in a changing room where you know points were at stake and you know, like you say, people playing for mortgages and things like that. And um, that's just where I want to be. I want to be in a position where I have to fight, you know, backs against the wall type of thing. Yeah, your mentality is. He's amazing, and I know I don't want to embarrass you, but like for someone so young, and, and I've spoken to people about you, just your, your attitude and, and your mentality, and the way you carry yourself is excellent. Is that something you've picked up along the way, or is that just from your your upbringing, from your parents? Um, yeah, I mean, my, my parents obviously have a, a massive part to play in that, um, but also I think a massive thing for me has been being involved with Shamrock Rovers first team since the age of 14 and 15, um, being around men, seeing how they conduct themselves. Um, seeing you know the level of professionalism, so I feel like um, people like Ronan Finn, uh, Roberto Lopez, uh, Lee Grace, you know all these type of really good professionals. Alan Manis, you know, um, I feel like those type of people. I, I liked to surround myself even from the age of 15, 16. I didn't want to be with the younger lads. Uh, I always made an effort to go and sit on the table, you know, with the experienced players, uh, to learn from them, to see the way they do things, um, and I think that was a massive part of me maturing so early um, and a massive part of how I was able to, to be comfortable going into the dressing room both at Rochdale and Portsmouth. Yeah, because I tell you like a sponge you just absorb everything, especially because you're so young, like when you get past that maybe 30 mark, you don't to, you know, absorb it as much, but I'd say when you're young and you're kind of taking it all in, all the good stuff I mean. Yeah, definitely, like I think um, to be able to, to sit on the table with the most experienced players and listen to what they have to say is um, is crucial. Like I remember at Rochdale, I, I used to hang on to, to Paul McShane because obviously his level of experience and obviously being an Irish lad as well really, really helped. And Owen O'Connell, who was the is the captain there as well, just to have lads like that who were experienced and He's been playing in League One. He? Yeah, he has, yeah. Um, just to be around those type of people day in, day out was, um, was like you said, uh, just allowed me to be a sponge and absorb all the information. Mm, you had Brian Barry Murphy there uh, coaching as well. What was it like with him? Um, he's obviously with City now, um, very highly regarded coach. And how was he for you? Yeah, Brian was brilliant. You know, first of all, he he was the one that that saw me and uh, gave me the opportunity to play, which is the massive thing. Um, I had a bit of a shaky start in the in the first couple of games, but you know, he he backed me. 
um, and that was massive for me. And he gave me the opportunity to go and play and to um, to go and show my quality. And of course, I made my debut while at Rochdale, so I wouldn't have been able to do that without his faith. Well, just you, you obviously while you were at Rochdale, um, you got your opportunity with Ireland, but you were you were brought in, um, and a, a lot of eyebrows were raised because Darren was left out because he'd been such a you know, huge keeper for Ireland, and Stephen decided not, not to go with him, and he brought in yourself. Um, I think it was yourself, um, Mark, and James Talbot, if I'm... If I'm uh, I think it was Kieran O'Hara. Kieran O'Hara, sorry. Yeah. But at that stage, it was kind of who was going to play in goal. You were playing at Rochdale, which was considered at the time for a lot of people not to be the level required. And then Gavin, or sorry, Mark was playing with Bournemouth and maybe not playing as much as people thought he should have been. Um, we know after the Serbia game there was a lot of grief given to Mark from fans and stuff like that, which I thought was a bit harsh, if I'm being honest. But then came the Luxembourg game, and we at that stage we were under massive pressure. I know we hadn't scored in a number of the games, and then from that game, Alan Brown scored and James Collins scored the other. Um, so we got the goal, kind of drought off our backs, didn't win the game. So we're going to the Luxembourg, Luxembourg game, and. People are like, we have to win this, we have to win this. Obviously, we know it didn't go too well, but on a more positive scale, and I'm very proud that I can say I was actually at your debut. I was lucky enough to be one of the ones that was working there. It wasn't an ideal scenario because COVID and this and that, but I remember, like, well, I'd get your kind of lead up to the game and, and when you found out, it might have been similar to your Shamrock Rovers debut, and then kind of my perspective of watching you, then I'll, I'll come to that after. But what was it like? When did Stephen say to you, did you know in training what was going on? And, it was all that for you. Yeah, so um, I think it was, if I can remember correctly, because we played Serbia away, it was quite a quick turnaround to the Luxembourg game. So we didn't have, we might have had one training session, maybe two. Um, so there was no real indication given on the on the pitch. Uh, but I do remember Dean Kiley came came to my, my room the morning of the game and just said, look, um, you're going to play tonight. Um, and from then, you know, I can just remember the the mass amounts of adrenaline and emotion um, straight away. I remember I, I rang my mum and my dad and, and told them and, you know, tried to get to sleep in the afternoon was difficult, but um, I did, you know, and then just the overall emotion going to the game, you know, seeing seeing fans out on the doorstep with the flags and uh, things like that was, it was such an emotional experience, but um, obviously when I got to the stadium then it's just straight into game mode and uh, it was just focused from there. Playing in an empty stadium was was really strange. Um, can, can I just ask you about one person? And you know I love him, Seamus. What was he like for you to the build up to that? Because I imagine he was massive. Yeah, so uh, Seamus was massive from from the very first moment uh, I stepped into the hotel when I for, for the first call up of that camp. Um, I remember first thing he came up to me and had a conversation and straight away he had known about you know how I was doing at Rochdale and he was asking about other players at the club and um, he'd done his due diligence and you know that's that's what he's like now I see with all the new lads that come in he always is welcoming he knows about where they are how they're doing and I think he, he has a massive role uh, as a leader and he does his job very well and like I said with um, the players I surrounded myself with at Rovers and at Rochdale. I do the same when I'm away with Ireland. You know, I try to be around Seamus as much as possible because I want to learn from him and I want to be able to, you know, take his really good leadership qualities and, you know, I'd like to have some of them. Absolutely. Well, I think you're carrying some of them anyway. But, uh, sorry, just take you back to, you were saying you were coming out to the stadium at that point. So what was that like, Aaron Naveen and and that type of stuff, you know? Yeah, Probably so, different with no fans. Yeah, but, it was really different with no fans. You know, I had a bit of an eerie feel. I'd played in stadiums with no fans um, throughout the season at Rochdale, but none as big as the Aviva. And, you know, to have such a massive, massive stadium that was just empty and, you know, you can you can hear the echoing of, of everything, you know, I can hear my own voice and... Mm. Um, I can definitely hear you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was very strange. Uh, but like I said, as soon as the warm-up started and um, as soon as the, the whistle went to start the game, you know, it was just full focus. Yeah, I was going to say that because I remember Shane was just playing, but you were the loudest player on the pitch, and this is a guy on his debut, ordering people and players to to get into position. How how did you find that? Like, they weren't looking at you strange, going, "Who's this fella telling me what to do?" I know it's top level football and stuff yeah. like that, but I just imagine they were quite happy because every time you went down, I think to make a save, Shane Duffy was on you, patting you on the head, saying, "Well done," and I imagine that gave you a good boost as well. Yeah, yeah, like I, I never had spoke to him about, you know, my communication or anything. I just think it's it's a given from a goalkeeper, you know, and um 
I don't know any player who wouldn't like a goalkeeper who's vocal behind them. You know, I think not just being loud. Like I'm, I'm loud, but I think my quality of information, what I'm saying, and how I'm saying it is important. You know, I'm not, I'm not out here just to, to hammer players. You know, I'm not, I'm not shouting just for the sake of shouting. I'm giving quality information, and um, I think the players really respect that. Yeah, because I was, I was just looking at, I was just surprised because of the age, how loud you were. That's, that's more what I mean. Like it was great to see. I think everybody that was around me in that media box was like, wow, this fella. I remember actually we were doing a, the lads were doing a, a watch along at home, and I was on a half time, and they were like, oh, how's the game going? I said, Gavin Bazoon has been excellent. I, I, I don't want to embarrass you here, but I was saying you were excellent, and you were communicating, and, and you were letting people know where everyone was all the time, and. Um, I just uh, maybe it was the fact that there was no fans that they could hear you that bit more, you know what yeah. I mean? But you just look totally at home uh, at that stage despite being so young. Yeah, and I mean that comes back to you know being around the first team from such an early age at Shamrock Rovers. I remember having to work on that a lot. You know, it was even more difficult at the age of 15 trying to shout at older players that you know I would have considered you know my inspiration. Um, yeah, sometimes they'd turn around and look at me and they'd give me a shout back and, you know, it frightened me a bit and that was all part of, you know, building building character um, and, you know, like that that's what allowed me to be able to do it at this level now. Yeah, it served you well so far, but just like, look, I don't really want to dwell too much on that result, but, you know, it must have been fantastic for you to make your debut. Your family must have been absolutely delighted. I know uh, Richie Fitzgibbon as well, he would know you quite well. He was buzzing for you as well because you'd worked with him on, on the way up with, uh, I think, Ireland underage and stuff like that. So everybody was just so happy and I think we're starting to kind of see a little bit of a, an evolution in the team now and I think it did take time. A lot of fans were impatient about that, but I think you're starting to maybe see the fruits of it now. And Just, just on that, how have you found the progression with Steven? Um, I think th things started to turn the game, the Serbia game at home. I met you after the game. Do you remember we, we, we were out on the side of the road and everyone was coming over to getting your your because yeah, yeah. you were amazing that you made countless saves that kept us in the game. We ended up getting the draw and the end one one, the one that went in uh, off Shane Duffy. Or he was a bit of a nuisance and it went in. So, but that was the thing where everyone was going, okay, we're starting to see something here. This kid in goal, he's he's amazing. Then other players started stepping up and since then I think we've we've progressed. How, how have you seen it from your point of view? Yeah, I mean the the massive thing is just to give to give credit to the manager on all the the opportunities um, he gave to the young lads. Like I can't remember the number, but he spoke about it last it's time in a, camp. I think it's around twelve to fourteen um, new new lads that were capped. Yeah, so I, I mean that's just massive credit to him for for just giving the right lads the opportunity at the right time to go and prove themselves. And you know a lot of them have um, repaid the faith and have been really 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 good in their performances. And um, I suppose that's uh, where you're seeing the evolution of the team. Yeah, because like. You've got Troy, you've got Nathan Collins, who did outstanding. What a goal he scored yeah, there, yeah. you know, recently against uh, Ukraine. And then you have Michael Obafemi, who's, who's kind of not been around. He's back in now. It, might have been, it must have been kind of annoying for you to, to miss that true injury, the, the last camp, because it looked like it was quite enjoyable. You know, the 3-0 win at the Aviva, we haven't really had the best of results in terms of like that, do you know what I mean? Um, you're kind of looking at it, you've got Cuevy in there, you've got Mark there, you're always asked this question, I don't really like asking it you, but like, it must be great in a way that it keeps you all on your toes and, you, and it'll come to a later point that I'll, I'll make and obviously you want to go out and play first team football, but the fact is that you all keep each other on your toes and I think it's great because no matter who plays, you know you're going to get performance because they'll, know they'll be taken out of the team. Yeah, and I mean, like any time I've been after asked a question, I've always given the same answer. You know, the level of the training from from the three of us has always been, you know, top level. And credit to Dean Kylie as well; he manages the sessions really well. And um, I feel like whenever I go away, the quality of the sessions is always, you know, top notch. And we're always on it um, in terms of, you know, if we have uh, finishing drills or games. You know, a lot of times the keepers are coming out on top, and you know, it's more of a competition between us. Um, and it's brilliant, you know, that we all bring the best out in each other, which is uh, what you want. Yeah, well, you got so many plaudits, you know, through your international football. I think that's kind of led you and propelled you that bit more now, you know, club-wise. club, club -wise. And you got the RTE Sports Person of the Year and stuff like that. I think it was based off your performances with Ireland on the club level, but maybe they wouldn't have seen it as much. But it's been a great rise so far, like, I, since I know, 15 years of age to now. Like, could you have imagined it gone so well as it has? Um, I don't think I could have imagined the way it's gone, but um, 
in my head, you know, I'm, I never really think too far ahead. I'm always thinking of, you know, the next week, the next day, the next training session. Uh, I'm never thinking too far ahead into the future, you know. It's just, um, I know what my overall ambitions are, uh, but I don't like to think about them too much. I just try to take things just step by step. I think that's what the best players do. It's kind of, they, they focus on the now, that will lead them to the, to the future, I think, in that sense. Yeah, exactly, you know, like you say, there's, a, there's no point in thinking too far into the future. Um, you've just got to take things day by day. Just one point, obviously, I didn't touch on up there was, was Cristiano Ronaldo uh, it, within that you know run, and that was another moment where people were like taking notes. I think people that maybe didn't watch Ireland as much took notice because it was Ronaldo and this and that. But you faced him, or sorry, you you watched him here, um, and then to come up and face him, what was that like? And that was like for me, that was one of the best Irish performances in recent times. It's just unfortunate the way the the game ended, you know. Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, you know, it was a massive game for us. And uh, obviously, like you said, the performance of the lads was absolutely amazing. And, you know, we could have, we probably should have come away with, with more than just the 2 1 loss. We should have had at least a draw. But we, we feel like um, we could have definitely won that game. And it would have been an amazing, amazing win for Ireland. Um, and that was really disappointing. In my opinion, the ref didn't help us there. But that's just my opinion. I know you can't comment on it. But yeah, that must have been just like a real kick in the teeth. But at the same time, but you probably actually don't even look at it like that because you probably look at it as a loss. But it was a real kind of moment for the team, I think, to, to grow from there. I said it to Matt Doherty when I was over with him, and he said, like, I think at that point you need to fix the mentality of the week. And what he meant by that was if we win that game, people become mentally stronger from it. And I think, in fairness, from that game, things went our way, and we started getting that little bit of luck that maybe we weren't getting through COVID and stuff because the amount of players we were constantly missing and stuff like that. How, how you, do you kind of uh, see that as, a, as an overall from what Matt said, I suppose? Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, what you said is completely right, but I think we still did get a lot out of that game. I think we proved to ourselves that we came up against one of the, one of the greatest nations. Um, and, you know, we went toe to toe with them and we felt like we should have won, which is a massive thing, you know, and it means nothing in terms of points. But I suppose it gave us a lot going forward in terms of having confidence to, to come up against opposition like that. And obviously we got one step closer when we played them in the Aviva. We drew, drew the game nil all and, you know, you never know next time we come up against that level of opposition, you know, we want to go even further again. Mm, it's great to hear an Irish player saying that and the, the level of vision. I actually kind of take that back to the, the 21s when we used to be here. Actually, I remember one day you were training and I just gave you a little nod over there. I was 21s training about 2018. And um, I remember around that period, and we were speaking to a lot of the younger lads coming through now and their ambition and the, the, their mentality that no fear, you know, no matter who, who we're playing. There's no fear. We feel like we can go out and compete and, and try win in every game, not just oh hang on for a draw or, or you know backs against the wall and then you know last minute set piece. It's try and go, try and dominate, try win, and you know give everyone a game. Yeah, exactly. I mean, why why not? Why why do we have to be the team that you know sits off and like you said waits for a late win or a set piece? You know we we can be a lot more aggressive in our approach and you know have a lot more confidence in our own ability and. You know, go to toe to toe with these teams and try to outplay them almost. I think it's great that the fact that so many are coming through from the twenty ones that you all know each other. It's a great bunch to add to already what was a great bunch with you know James McLean and John Egan and Shane Duffy and, and James Coleman, these types of people who I imagine is it's a great blend of I'm not going to call them old but like experienced and youth coming together now, and I think that's why we're kind of seeing um, it's starting to pay off that bit more. Yeah, no, you're right. There is definitely, um, there's definitely like an older group and a younger group, and uh, you know, but the the blend is really good. You know, the manager's done really well on bringing the right personalities in. You know, because um, I feel like I know. I think I say this on behalf of all of the lads. Everybody looks forward to going into the camps. Everybody looks forward to to being together. It's a different feeling than being at your club. Um, I know this because a lot of lads have said it in, in the camps that, you know, everybody looks forward to coming and playing for Ireland and um, the relationships they have with other lads on the teams are, are really strong bonds and I think that all that does is uh, it means when you go and step out on the pitch, you know, you have that extra percent over the other team. I think that's a lot of players who maybe might be out of form or something, they, they enjoy it because there's a chance that if they can get in the team with Ireland, they can go back to the clubs and it might force them to get uh, you know, in, back into their manager's thoughts or something. So I think a lot of them look at it like that. Let's talk about Portsmouth. Um, you come off the back of a outstanding season again with them. You, you, you got you know, the, the main accolades there. Players, player of the season and player of the season. 
How would you assess the season overall? It looked like you really enjoyed your football for the course of the season. Yeah, so like the biggest thing for me was that, you know, I played in 44 out of the 46 league games. That was a massive target for me was to, to play in as many games as possible to stay fit and, you know, um, good or bad, just have the experiences of game time, um, have another season at League One and really just go out and prove myself. Um, and I really enjoyed it, you know, I got um, exposed to a lot of different, a lot of different things, you know, and uh, it really just allowed me to have a lot more confidence and just to elevate me. Yeah, I imagine it must have been great to have so many of the Irish players there, like you had Ronan Curtis there, Sean Williams, I'd say he was massive for you, I'm going to talk, talk about him in a sec, but then there was other players, Marcus Harness was there as well. Um, I imagine that was good just to make you settle, because Portsmouth is obviously far away from Manchester and to have Irish there, Irish lads there, and you know, the, even sometimes the accent when you're away from home can help you kind of settle straight away. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Willow was was really good for me, you know, and uh, so were the other lads. You know, it was just a good group in general. And um, Danny and Nicky, you know, they were they were brilliant for me. It made me feel really comfortable from as soon as I went in, and you know, really allowed me to have that responsibility and just go and enjoy my football. Yeah, but see Sean, Sean Williams, like Jason Malumbi speaks so highly about him from his time at Millwall and how good he was with him. So I imagine he would have been helping out you in that way as well, looking at you, here's a nice young Irish lad here, I'm going to help him out. Was he was he always seeing if you're OK? Was he giving you a stick like he was giving Jason a stick? He wasn't giving me much stick, no, no, he was he was always all right. You know, I think after after the first few weeks, um, once I'd settled, he realised I was all right and, you know, we just just became um, good teammates from then and um, I was able to just kick on and really just uh, go and enjoy my football. Yeah, I th it's funny because you are playing the same level, Rochdale and uh, Portsmouth was playing the same level, but it was deemed a year previous that it wasn't a level high enough for you to play, but you're still coming out for Ireland and showing that you can play at the elite level and you can play on the international stage, a stage sorry, and you're not phased by the opposition, which I think is a credit to you. Yeah, and I think it was... Um a really good decision, you know, from from my agent and the people around me, from Xavi, you know, to to tell me, you know, I could have had the possibility of going to the championship, but I think to stay in League One and guarantee myself that game time was was massive, and I think it's paid off. Yeah, no, tenfold, you know. We, I think in football sometimes it's about luck, obviously hard work, but sometimes it's just that that luck and that little break you need, and maybe the Luxembourg game, you know, that might have been the break you needed, and then that, as I said, that propelled you from a club perspective. Overall, the last season, how would you assess it? Were you happy with how things went uh, at Portsmouth and then with Ireland as a whole? Like? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of lot, lots that's happened over the last 12 months and um, I was really happy with my time at Portsmouth. You know, it was, um, it was a great experience for me. Like I said, the game time was the massive thing. Um, but looking forward now, you know, I can't wait to, to get started on my new new venture, you know, and um, to play in the in the Premier League is obviously my biggest goal. So the first thing I've got to do is uh, go in there and fight for my place. How difficult was it to leave Manchester City? Because I would, I'd assume that they were looking at you going, OK, Edison, he's at a good age. He's going to be playing the next number of years, probably his number one. But they're probably looking at you saying, here's a keeper who in a couple of years may be ready to come in and... and be that player for us. Was that hard that you speak about Xavi and you've obviously got relationships with Manchester City to then say bye to them? You know, it was rumoured that they were going to offer you a bumper contract and for you to stay, but you wanted, again, hammered home the, the fact that you wanted to play first team football. Yeah, I had multiple conversations with, with Xavi over the phone and I went to meet him in Manchester in person as well. Um, and we had really good conversations and, you know, he was. Um, he was really good with me in terms of, you know, saying that, you know, he wanted me to stay. He wanted to, to give me the opportunity to, you know, be around the first team for a year. And um, I told him, like you said, you know, my ambition is um, to play again. You know, I wouldn't be in the position I, I am now without playing. Um, and I feel the same, you know, I want to go out and prove myself. Um, I want to make the brave decision to go out, to go out and play first team football again. I want to fight for my place now at Southampton. Um, break into that team and then from there just go and you know enjoy my football and uh, show everybody what I can do um, and you know for, for Javi and Manchester City to, to give me that opportunity to go uh, I'm very thankful for. Mm. Well, it must be a huge compliment that uh, you know that they wanted to keep you on they obviously see you're, you're still very talented but as you say if you can go somewhere and try and make a claim to be number one and uh, you know get Premier League experience week in week out that's only going to stand to you. 
Yeah, definitely. And I just see that as my path at the moment. You know, I feel like we've made really good decisions uh, up until now. And I feel like this is going to be a really, really good decision as well um, that I'll look back on and be really thankful for because, you know, um, I've never been one for, you know, sitting back and hoping that things happen. I want to go and uh, make my own decisions and, you know, have everything in my control. And, you know, f for me, uh, making this move to Southampton, it feels like the, the decision that will allow me to have the most control over my future. Mm. Just you, you, Southampton, I imagine there's a lot of Portsmouth fans that aren't happy now that you've gone to them. They're obviously direct rivals, but you made the decision to go there. How hard was the decision to make? Was it easy to just, that's the club for me? How was it? How did um, it go? Yeah, so I mean, there was there was um, a few clubs interested, but I think Southampton. Here, Denver, Everton were rumours. I I feel like you should have signed for them. Just <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know you're an Everton fan. Yeah, <laughs> um, but you know, for me, the the Southampton one, you know, the the amount of effort they put into it and the how quickly they worked on things um, and how quickly they wanted to get thing, things done was massive for me. You know, they really showed uh, a massive amount of faith in me, and you know, from from speaking to the manager uh, as well, he he um, he told me, you know. Uh, about how much they, research they had done and how much uh, they were watching me at Portsmouth and um, from there I just got a really good feel for it and um, I feel like it's a massive club in terms of uh, where I can go and you know you see the, the amount of players they've developed um, and they showed me a pathway and it's one I want to follow. Mm. Did Pep say anything before you left to, to try and keep you or anything like that? Was he like we see a future for you here before you'd left? Um, no, most of my conversations were, were with Xavi, yeah. yeah, and I think um, he, he was brilliant, like I said, he really um, said that we want you here, but he also sees how, how this Southampton move can be um, massive for me and he didn't want to stand in my way. Hmm. It is a massive, like, you, know, you probably don't look at it, like the 12 million, it's been a while since we've had a player come to the Premier League on, on, on kind of money like that. Uh, or a price tag like that and it's supposed to rise and I believe Shamrock Rovers I, I don't know too much about it but I believe they'll get some of the price which is obviously good and it must feel good for you that you can kind of give back in that sense as well yeah definitely you know I I'm um, I'm delighted that that it comes a lot of it comes back to to Rovers because um, I feel like a lot of my development was done here and obviously without them I wouldn't I wouldn't be anywhere near the level I am today so you know to come back and know that I've contributed in some way is a really special feeling for me mm. I think it's great though because not in not a lot of, of recent transfers you know to the point uh, Nathan Collins is the most recent one I can think of where he signed with Burnley um, and other than that, in yourself, I, I don't think of too many players in recent times. And this is out of the Stephen Kerry, uh, Kenny team, who are now making moves to Premier League teams and, and hopefully getting Premier League football. I mean, you look at how much the Premier League football stood to Nathan Collins towards the back end of this season. I know they got relegated, but him personally, he's, he's been amazing. Yeah, yeah, Nathan's, Nathan's really been flying, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's great to see, to see you know, fellow teammates from the Irish team going, going into the Premier League and doing so well. And uh, that's my aim now as well, to first of all work hard, get myself into the team and then just to, to prove my, myself playing week in, week out football at the highest level. Hmm. Just to finish up, uh, I know you had a rib injury. Uh, what's the latest on that? When will you be back playing? Yeah, so I was really disappointed, you know, um, just in, in, I think it was on the Tuesday, leading up to the Armenia game, just in training, I just landed a bit awkwardly and um, came, came back home, got a scan and I just had a, a small fracture in my rib, so it was, uh, it was a really disappointing one, but, you know, it's, it's uh, feeling much better now and I'm, I'm hopefully going to be 100% to go back into pre-season next week. Absolutely. Well, listen, I, I think it goes without saying it, anyone watching this will think you're a special young man and I mean that in the nicest possible way like and you might get embarrassed with me saying that but it's great to kind of be here and hear first from your mouth everything that you've kind of your story so far and I'm sure that there's going to be so much more for you to add to what you've already achieved and I just want to say huge thanks and I wish you the best you of luck going, going forward with everything so thanks very much for your time so guys uh, let us know your thoughts on this video in the comments um, a huge thanks to Gavin Bazuna for coming along and joining us and giving up his time um, yeah, drop a like on the video, don't forget to subscribe and we'll speak to you soon, thanks for watching.